Hello. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning, madam. How are you? We are we fine, are thank fine. you. Okay. I sent the management to leave in the first slide, the second slide, rather. I hope you saw it. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. And then your work. So after the class, I'll send the first ones to them. This one. Okay. 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 Last time we we uh, we ended on sources, right? Yeah. So today we are looking at um, beverages. Beverages. Now, beverages give us some of the liquids we need. And we will get them from our, uh, the drink beverages that are re responsible so that they will not cause any harm to our body. And this unit will help us identify different types of beverages, their uses, and how to prepare some of these beverages. The objectives. This lesson is going to help us tell what beverages are. So you can be asked what are beverages. This will help you know it. Then you will enumerate the uses of beverages. And then you explain the principles of beverage preparation. And you can also describe the methods of preparing beverages. Now, what are beverages? What are beverages? We can say that beverages are liquid foods. Hello. Hi. Beverages are liquid foods that are consumed for their first quenching effects or for their stimulating, refreshing, and nourishing properties. So the definition is giving us three properties of beverages that is stimulating, refreshing, and then nourishing. And then the main component of beverage is water but also contains stimulants, colors, and flavors. So the main component of a beverage, every beverage, is water. Then stimulant, colors, and flavors. Now, the stimulants in beverages, for example, when you take a tea bag, for instance, the stimulant is what stimulates the body or it keeps the body alert then the colors we see them we see the colors in the beverage for instance fanta they add food colors to it so that gives it that um, orange or yellowish color and then flavors flavors will also give the aroma so basically this is what beverages are. Now, classification of beverages. You can classify. Hello, Afedo. Hi. Hi. Okay. Can you hear me well? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's go on. Classification of beverages. Beverages are classified into alcoholic and then non-alcoholic beverages. These are the two main classifications. Beverages, we are classifying them into alcoholic and then non-alcoholic beverages. But when we talk about the first one, which is about the uh, properties 
of beverages that is the stimulating the refreshing and then the nourishing properties we spoke about but when we are talking about the classification we can talk about the two main classification of beverages which is the alcoholic and then the non-alcoholic beverages when we talk about alcoholic beverages they are beverages that contain some percentage of alcohol and it may be it may be either hard liquor or a soft liquor the hard liquor we can give examples like gin whiskey and then brandy whilst the soft liquor we can talk about wine beer pito etc so what it means is that this gin whiskey brandy they are more stronger in terms of the alcohol percentage than the beer the wine pitos and the, the rest we can think of now alcoholic beverages have some characteristics and some of these characteristics are they contain fermented sugar and have strong flavor spirit we can give an example like wine alcoholic beverages they contain fermented sugar and they have strong flavor spirits like the wine now let's use a very uh, less alcoholic something to cite example you see aliha aliha is made from fermented corn and if you look at the way aliha is you can produce it either the sweet way that is non-alcoholic or with a bit of alcohol depending on the fermentation level so this is the fermented sugar the same applies to palm wine a fresh palm wine that is not so fermented wouldn't be so strong like a palm wine that has been there for days or weeks another characteristic is that they act as a sedative when consumed excessively you see when people take in alcohol in excess their behavior changes they will feel they are walking forward but they are rather going backwards <laughs> so that is the sedative uh, characteristics of alcohol when it is consumed in excess and this varies from one person to the other. Somebody can take a full glass and the person is still stable. Another person just take a teaspoon and the person is struggling. Then they have <laughs> very low nutritive value. So alcohol doesn't have a high nutritive value, very, very, very low. And you know, because we say it's from fermented sugar, sugar is an example of um, carbohydrates sugar is an example of carbohydrate that's a simple sugar and they are ready to serve alcohols are ready to serve you don't need to cook them before using unless you use wine in food preparation that is when you have to prepare it a bit but if you are drinking alcohol as a beverage you just take it raw without subjecting it to any heat. Now let's look, look at some examples of alcoholic beverages. We can talk about wine. Wine is fermented juice of the grape and it is available in many different varieties or styles. We have the red wine, the white wine rose wine sparkling wine and then organic and they may be dry or medium or sweet and you know with the serving items there's a special glass for serving red wine there's a special glass for serving the white wine 
normally the wine glasses that are tall and then the globes are very big and round they are used for red wines others are also like that but globes are are big but they are a bit slimmer than the one used in serving the uh, red wine and then with champagnes their glasses are very tall with a, a long stem we can also talk about fortified wines fortified wines are those that have been strengthened by the addition of alcohol and that is usually produced from grape juice so the fortified ones it could be from fruits that they have added more alcohol which they say is normally produced from um, grape juice and they gave some examples like sherry madeira and then pot they are examples of wines that has been fortified then we can also talk about aromatized wines they are also produced by flavoring simple basic wine with a blend of ingredients and we can talk about the vermouth and then the dubonnet they are all types of wines so with the wines we've spoke about fortified wines and then we have also talk about the aromatized wines then um, spirits spirits they are distilled or distillations of fermented liquids which are covered they are in a liquid spirit and they include whiskey gin vodka brandy rum so the spirits mostly are stronger and they are distilled they are distilled whilst the wines are produced through fermentation then we have liquor 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 they are also flavored and sweetened spirits example cherry brandy then we have cocoa and then mixed drinks with the liquors it is an alcohol that has been sweetened that is the reason why they are giving the example like the cherry brandy the cocoa and then the mixed drinks and then the cocktails they are usually a mixture of a spirit with one or more ingredient from liquor like fruit juices fortified wines etc so cocktails may be garnished with fresh meat or fresh fruits or olives and cocktails are mixed drinks and can be made from non-alcoholic ingredients as well so somebody can choose to mix um, any fruit at all with a hard liquor and then call it a cocktail is that clear yes ma'am so can we continue okay let's talk about yes. <coughs> Sorry. Beer is also a term that covers all beers, all beer drinks. And you know their names. Uh, Eagle Beer, the Larger, uh, Star. They are all types of beers or beer. And it is made from a combination of water grain and beer is a term that covers all beers like drinks such as ale um, all those strong uh, drinks beer uh, golden lager beer 
Star, uh, Eagle, we are all types of beers. <coughs> Combinations of water, grain, hops, sugar, and then yeast. And types of beer include bitter, mild, Botumale, ballet wine, hottest, and then larger. Beers are good sources of energy and they contain high levels of carbohydrates and protein. So beer, beers are richer in mineral than wine, but lower in alcohol. So looking at beer, beer is lower in the percentage of alcohol as compared to liquor and then the spirits. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay. The next one we'll talk about is cider. Cider. And I'm sure you've heard about uh, apple cider. Apple cider. Vinegar. Cider is, yes. Cider is fermented apple juice. Example homemade. As paling cider. Crumpy, strong, homemade, rock cider. They are all fermented apple juice. So anytime you hear of a cider, it's an apple juice that is fermented. Any question about the alcoholic beverages before we talk about non-alcoholic beverages? No, madam. Okay. So at least you can remember beer and then the wines too. You can remember the fortified wine and then aromatized wine. And then the, you can remember the larger, the star, um, the rest. And liquors too, you can, you know, the, the spirits, they are distilled. Okay, now let's talk about non-alcoholic beverages. Non-alcoholic beverages do not contain alcohol. They don't contain alcohol at all. And they include milk and milk drinks, cocoa, coffee, fruit juices, lemon, ice, etc. And they supply the body with energy and they contain natural sugar. And non-alcoholic beverages too are classified according to their nutritive value. So we classify non-alcoholic beverages into one, refreshing beverages, two, nourishing beverages, and then three, stimulating beverages. Now with the refreshing beverages, they include carbonated drinks, like Fanta, Sprite, Coca-Cola, uh, Mirinda, um, Malt, they are all carbonated drinks. And then fruit juices and fruit drinks are also examples of refreshing beverages. Now, somebody can ask you the difference between a fruit juice and fruit drinks. People mistaking fruit drinks for fruit juice. With the juice, nothing is added. It's just the raw juice you have extracted from the fruit. But the moment you add syrup or sugar to your fruit juice, it is no longer fruit juice, but rather fruit drink. So that is the difference between a fruit juice and then fruit drink. So we are saying that carbonated drinks and then fruit juices and fruit drinks falls under refreshing beverages. And then we have the second category of non-alcoholic beverage, which is the nourishing beverages. They are also made up of cocoa drinks, milk, 
and then cereal drinks. So we can refer to this soya milk, a vital milk as an example of a nourishing beverage. And then a country milk, because it contains some cocoa and then some milk. We can also refer to it as a refreshing, sorry, a nourishing drink. And then any other drink that contains a cereal or is made from cereal, we can also refer to it as a nourishing drink. Then the third one, which is stimulating beverages, they contain a lot of stimulants. A beautiful example is the lemongrass tea. Lemongrass, locally called tea, yeah, is an example of a stimulating beverage. And then any other tea bag. Tea bag, being it uh, Lipton, Zester, Chelsea, you can name a number of them. Then coffee. So all these are examples of stimulating beverages. So do you have any question on this? No, yes, madam, please. Okay. Madam, please, which one is the elephant's grass? Oh, that one, I don't think is edible. See, the very tall, tall grass, you, you just weed it away. Uh, mm -hmm. Those ones are not edible. It is the lemon grass that is edible. People call it tea grass or fever grass. But the real name is lemon grass. Okay, let's look at some characteristics of non alcoholic beverages that contain natural sugar. So, non alcoholic beverages, their nutritive value are high in vitamins, proteins, fats, and then some carbohydrates. Then they need some kind of preparation before serving. That is the non-alcoholic beverages. And they weaken the body if the intake is not controlled. So these are some characteristics of non-alcoholic beverages. You see, with the alcoholic beverages, we said that they are ready to serve. You don't need to prepare. You've got your beer. You don't need to put it on fire. But you cannot just be chewing the lemongrass. You need to boil it before, if you want to add your milk or you want to add your sugar and take, you do that. So they require some preparations. Again, when we were looking at the alcoholic beverages, we said their nutritive value is very low and it is basically carbohydrate because it's fermented sugar. But with, with the non-alcoholic beverages, their nutrient value is higher. We spoke about vitamins, proteins, fat, and then some carbohydrates. So this shows that the non-alcoholic beverages contains more nutrients than alcoholic beverages. And then they need some kind of preparation before serving. That is what I explained earlier on, that even if it is Milo, you need to heat your water before adding it to it. Even if you are taking it with cold water, the water will not add to the Milo itself. Somebody needs to do that. And then they will weaken the body if the intake is not controlled. You cannot say, as for me, I like non-alcoholic beverage. So every day you just be taking um, malt, 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 or tea, tea, tea. No, you need to control mm -hmm. the intake of it. Now let's look at uses of beverages. What are beverage used for? Or what do what will it do in our body? Beverages contribute water, thus having thirst quenching effects. But mind you, when you are thirsty 
and you drink a beverage, it will quaint your test for a short period. You realize you'll be thirsty again. It, yes. It, uh -huh. Although Ooh. beverages will have that uh, test quaintening effect, you still need your water. Now, some beverages act as stimulants. For instance, tea, coffee, and even the lemon grass. They act as stimulant because they stimulate the body. Let's just compare two people who have taken breakfast. One person took corn porridge, popularly known amokoko. Then another person took Lipton or <laughs> coffee. The two people who took the Lipton or coffee will stay more alert than the one who took the corn porridge or the amokoko because the corn porridge is made from a corn dough and the corn dough is fermented. That will make you feel sleepy. But the coffee or the tea bag keeps you more alert. So that is the reason why we are saying some of these beverages act as stimulants. And then the third point, they provide energy and nutrients. I think that is already clear from our previous discussion. Now they refresh the body like the refreshing refresh the body a very hot afternoon you are so tired you just take sips of a nourishing beverage like a, a milk drink it will nourish it will refresh your body huh. then they add color variety taste and texture to the diet, you to have, have the food set on the table. Then let's assume you have different colors, and you have your a color like brown, which is your fried chicken, and then the rice, maybe plain rice is white, and you have your watermelon drink on the table with a different color. So it adds color to your table or to the diet, and also taste and texture to the diet then they improve the flavor of the food they are added to sometimes when you add some beverages to other foods for instance let's say you are preparing cake and you decided to add a bit of a um, fruit drink to it it will improve upon the flavor of your cake <coughs> you see it's not compulsory that when you are preparing cake you... and then they serve as accompaniment yeah. to snack foods for instance if you have a snack like um, biscuits cake meat pie. you yeah meat pie meat turn overs you accompany it with a beverage so don't make that mistake people will say i'm going to buy some snack and then you see them holding a bottle of drink the drink is not a snack the drink is rather an accompaniment to the snack which is your cake your biscuit or the local ones delica colo jolica colo um mention them the local snacks <laughs> Akmono. <laughs> they are all snacks. Uh -huh. So beverages serve as accompaniment to snack foods. And then some food juices serve as appetizers. A beautiful example of food juices that are used as appetizers are orange juice, lemon juice, lime juice. Um, pineapple juice watermelon juice they can all be used as appetizers and you know appetizers are the same as starters or first course
Now, how do we select our leverages? Before you can choose a beverage or select a beverage, it depends on personal taste. For instance, somebody will choose tea for breakfast. Another person will choose Milo. Another person will choose coffee. So please, next time you are taking a Milo, don't say Meleti Num. You are drinking Milo. <laughs> chocolate. If it's a tea bar, a tea bag, you are drinking tea. If it is coffee, you are drinking coffee. But normally what we do is we classify all as tea. That is not right. <laughs> Mama, that is you are drinking Milo. Do you think you are drinking the Milo like? No, but that, that is how it should be. The Milo is made from cocoa. So you can choose to say you are taking a, a, a cocoa drink or a cocoa beverage. It implies to either cocoa powder, milo, rich cocoa, chocolate, and the rest. But when you talk about tea, then it should be a tea, a, a tea bag or any tea grass, like the lemongrass. Hmm. Then two, it should be purchased from retailers with fast turnover. Can you explain this point? I'm saying that when you are selecting a beverage, you should purchase your beverage from retailers with fast turnover. Yes, Ruth. No, I don't understand. What about Michael? Well, I don't understand. When we talk about fast turnover, it means that goods in that shop doesn't take long to get finished. So, for instance, if they bring the Milo or the tea bag to the shop. People buy it quickly. It gets finished and then in no time they bring another one. So that is the fast turnover. It will not be in the shop for a prolonged period of time before it gets finished. So you are sure that you are buying a fresh beverage. Then two, you consider the occasion when you are selecting a beverage. Of course, you are not, you are not going to select um, an alcoholic beverage for breakfast. Uh, breakfast, mm -hmm. people sit at the table and then you have served bread and beer. No, so you look <laughs> at the occasion. Mm -hmm. Then methods of serving. Looking at the methods of serving, do you have all the serving items? Sometimes at homes, we just serve anyhow, but assuming you are handling a formal table, there's a special cup you use to serve coffee. Coffee, the one you use to serve coffee is different from what you use in serving your tea. Coffee cups are mostly very small, and then you use the right serving items like the uh, the teaspoon. But what do we do at home? We use the dessert spoon in stirring our teas. The dessert spoons, the very big ones, we use it in preparing our tea. But you have to take that into consideration. Then the age of the individual, when you are selecting a beverage, of course, it will not be prudent for you to select Stimulant for a toddler, like a, a nine-month-old baby. Then you are always serving that nine-month-old baby with tea, coffee. No, they are stimulating beverages. Tea is a stimulant, a stimulating beverage. Coffee is also a stimulating beverage. So if you serve the child with such beverages, that child will have difficulty in sleeping because... They, are, they will be alert and they will be worrying you a lot. Now let's look at preparation of beverages. Preparation of beverages. That is the next uh, subtopic under beverages. In beverage preparation, there's a basic principle. 
in the principle of preparation of beverage is concerned with developing a pleasing flavor and avoiding the extraction of too much stimulant. So this cut across for all beverages, especially the non-alcoholic beverages. When you are preparing them, the principle, or you must have at the back of your mind that you want to develop a pleasing flavor and then you avoid the extraction of too much stimulant. Now, when we talk about extraction of too much stimulant, what it means is that in the preparation of tea, if you drop your tea bag in your boiling water and then you leave it for a prolonged period of time, you realize that the color becomes too dark and then your tea will also have a bitter taste. Once the tea have a bitter taste, it means that you have extracted too much stimulant. So that is the meaning of this. Now we are going to look at the methods used in the preparation of beverages. Methods used in the preparation of beverages. And the first one is infusion. Infusion, we all do that a lot, but in disguise. With infusion, boiling water is poured over a substance and allowed standing until flavor is extracted. So with infusion as a method of beverage preparation, you boil your water and then you pour your water over the substance, being it coffee or tea, you pour it. So let's say, example, you are preparing a tea, tea bag, either Lipton or Zesta or Chelsea or whatever tea bag you want to use. You have your tea bag in your cup. When your water boils, you just pour it over the substance and then you allow it to stand for some time and you realize that the flavor and the color will be extracted into it. Example, they said steeped tea or coffee. So that is an example of infusion. Hello. Then I am lifting. Lifting, yes. Then the next one is, the next method is filtration. The next method is filtration. With filtration, the hot or the boiling water is poured slowly over a substance and closed in a kind of sieve for the fi filtered coffee. So I brought this to show to you as example with the filtration. You see, you have a cup like this. Can you see it? You see, this looks yeah. like a, a strainer. Uh -huh. So that mm. is the filtration. You put the strainer in the cup and then your substance is in the sieve. Your substance will be in the sieve. Then you pour your boiling or hot liquid slowly over the substance and you enclose it like this until the desired flavor until the desired flavor is achieved for you. That is the second method. Is that understood? The first yes, one, infusion, you just drop your substance in the boiling liquid and until the flavor and color is extracted. Then with the filtration, it goes to a sieve in an enclosed uh, something. Then the third one is percolation. With percolation, hot water is allowed to circulate through a substance held in a strainer. So again, we'll use this as example. Now, so with the percolation, you don't drop the substance on the sea, but it is held. You hold it like the tea bag has a, the rope. You hold it on the sieve, 
or the strainer until the desired strength is obtained. So the difference between the filtration and then the percolation is that with the percolation, it's not enclosed, but with the filtration, it is enclosed. And then the similarities or the, um, yeah, the similarity is that they, they all use a strainer or something that will filter it. Are you clear with the three methods? Mm. Yes, or you have a question. If you have a question, you are free to ask. Okay. And let's continue. My my questions covers this, so we have to finish. <laughs> my questions for next week, so we have to finish this. Then um, the next one is points to consider when preparing and serving beverages. When you are preparing and serving beverages, there are certain factors you have to take into consideration. One, you consider the time of the day. You are serving a beverage. Is it breakfast? Is it lunch? Is it in the afternoon? Or you consider the time of the day, then you know the appropriate beverage to serve or to prepare. Then two, age of the individuals. The ages of those who you are preparing the beverage for must be considered. Then three, nutritional needs of the individuals. Like I said, it is not advisable to prepare a stimulant for a toddler. Then you consider health conditions of the individual. If the person is having a health condition that he or she cannot sleep well, then you go preparing coffee for such a person. You are punishing the person. The person is struggling to have a, to sleep. Then you serve the person with a coffee. That person cannot sleep well. Mm -hmm. Then the, the next one is type of work done. The type of work the person does will also inform you or will also help you identify what kind of beverage to serve or to prepare. Any question on that? No, madam. Okay, no. Then let's look at tips for making a good coffee. If you want to make a very good coffee, then first of all, you need to use a clean coffee maker to avoid a extraction of uh, extraneous flavors. So when you are preparing coffee, you don't use a pot that you use in preparing stew to, to <laughs> prepare your water or to boil your water for the coffee. You realize that um, uh, saucepans that you use or pots that you use in preparing stew, each time you've used it over and over again, when you put it on fire, you see something like oil coming on top of the boiling water. And even when you taste it, because of the pepper and the spices you use, it will smell like that. You have that kind of flavor in it, so your coffee will not taste nice. And then two, you begin with fresh, cold water. It is advisable that for both coffee and tea, when you are going to prepare it, you fetch the water directly from the tap. You don't use water that has been stored over weeks. If the water is not fresh, it will also have effect on your either your coffee or your tea. And then make sure you use fresh coffee that has not gone flat. When we say it has gone flat, it means um, enufa. That applies to both coffee, tea, or milo. When coffee is not crispy, we say it has gone flat. So therefore, when you use it, you will not get the right flavor. The flavor will taste flat. Then four, 
Measure coffee well for desired strength. So you don't just fetch small coffee and then plenty water. You will not get the desired strength. Or you fetch plenty coffee, small water. It will taste bitter. So you have to make sure that you measure coffee well for desired strength. And then five, you keep the coffee warm and you serve as soon as possible. So right after preparation, you serve it hot as it's supposed to be served. You don't allow it to cool down before you serve because it's supposed to be a hot beverage. These are some few tips for beverage uh, for either coffee or tea preparation. Any question on that? No, mother. Okay. Let's continue. We look at reasons Madam. why. Hello. Reasons Please, why. Does coffee also have expiry date? Yes, it does. It does. It has expiry date. And in fact, sometimes if you expose it to uh, air, you open it and you don't close it. Although it's not expired as in the date, because air have entered, it flattens it and it loses its taste and uh, flavor. Okay, let's continue. So reasons why weak coffee is produced. The reason why when you prepare coffee, it will be weak. One, water has reached boiling point. So with coffee preparation, your water must not boil to the boiling point. The moment is hot and is just about boiling. It must not reach the boiling point at all. It must be very hot. You, you take it off the boil. Two, insufficient coffee juice. If you use very small coffee, your coffee will, will be weak. It's, you will not have that strong taste of the coffee you want. And then infusion time too short. You see the coffee these days, we have the powdered ones, normally the three in ones. Those ones, you know what we do about the infusion but the raw one that you have to use and then sift the chaff out it needs to infuse very well so so that you can get the desired flavor and taste and then when you use old coffee old coffee that will also produce a weak coffee an incorrect grind of coffee used for equipment in operation so if what you are using, uh, you are using incorrect grind for the coffee, that one too can cause a weak coffee. Then reasons why bitter coffee is produced. Sometimes you prepare your coffee and you realize it tastes bitter. It means that one, you use too much coffee or infusion time too long. The time for the infusion, you left it for too long a time. Or the coffee was not roasted correctly. You know, coffee is roasted. They roast the coffee. So when the coffee is not well roasted too, you can have that bitter effect and then when infusion is done at too high a temperature remember we said with coffee the water must not boil so when the water boils we say that infusion temperature is too high and coffee may have been left too long coffee may have been left too long so the coffee has been there for too long. It has become flat and you used it. You have that. Hello. Hi. Uh -huh. 
Now, how do you store coffee? You store coffee in a well ventilated store room. A well ventilated store room. And then, two, you use an airtight container for grounded, uh, for coffee grounds, and you ensure that they are well closed so that the flavor and strength will not evaporate. Then always keep coffees away from excessive moisture. So that is the reason why we are saying you should keep them in well-ventilated rooms. We don't keep coffee in fridge or freezers. They are supposed to be dry. So you don't keep them in freezers, but it should just be on the shelf where there is more air then it must not be stored near any strong smelling food because coffee will absorb their odors. So you cannot store your coffee close to onions, garlics. No, they must be stored away from such things. Then this is just like the tea, characteristics of a good coffee. A good coffee must have a good flavor it must have a good aroma it must have a good color and then a good body so basically these are the characteristics of good coffee okay now let's look at tea preparations. Tea also contains caffeine and tannin. Caffeine and tannin. And the principle a good tea brew should be sparkling, clear, and then the color should be amber for black tea. So it doesn't mean that because it's a black tea, it should look very black. It should be amber. That's crystal clearness you see with your lipton before you add the milk. That color is what is referred to as the amber. And then pale green to greenish yellow for green tea and light brown for oolong tea. So the uh, green teas normally you don't see the color as green but it used it looks like uh, a yellowish greenish color and there should be no bitterness in the tea now tea is brewed by preheating a hot a hot or boiling or boil the water to be used and then the measured tea into the pot and you pour the boiling water over it. Normally, it should be for three to four minutes. Then you remove or you drain. And tea bags, these days tea bags are available so you don't go through that draining. You just pick when you realize you have achieved the required strength and flavor. You just remove the tea bag from your boiling water after infusion so let's just talk about iced tea and then we look at storage of tea and we end there so to make iced tea you allow the tea to steep for about seven to ten minutes because the ice cubes will dilute the strength of the tea you pour tea over ice cubes or you let the tea cool first then you add the ice cubes to it so that is about iced tea iced tea can be taken in the afternoon then how do we store tea just like coffee you store it in dry clean and covered container and then well ventilated rooms and you keep it away from excessive moisture and it must not be kept near any strong flavor. So I would like us to end here. If you have any question, 
you can ask.